welcome to your seat at the table. We are looking at another installment for Battletech, and this is House Legal, or the Capellan Confederation. As you can see, it is in a plastic bag, and I think you will find it. Uh, I have a number of books that I keep in this kind of format, as they're, they're kind of getting old and fragile. I mean, the truth is, I mean, look at the binding on it. It's seen... It's seen a lot of use, a lot of use. I've read these things numerous times over the decades. And um, these books back in the day, the bindings were always kind of questionable, even brand new. You, you, you took your chances. There's really not a lot holding these things together. And you risk them falling apart and disintegrating. So I keep them, I've learned to keep them in bags because uh, they otherwise I'm afraid of losing pages. I mean here's here's another one for example that I'm going to be doing a review of. Uh, I actually tried to review it but somehow the recording got turned off. Anyway, pages are literally only held together by will. So uh, in order to keep things together in order and to help reduce further deterioration I'm trying to keep them in you know, the bags that you see. I'm sure that there are better methods than this, but this is the only one I have that's financially viable uh, and readily handy. So this was produced in 1987, and this is one of the five great houses of the Inner Sphere. And to really, even whether you're playing the tabletop war game Battletech or the, the, the role-playing game MechWarrior, to, un, to really get a, a end up feel and vibe and flavor of the individual houses these these are the books all right these are the books and so house Leal is the smallest of the five successor states the acknowledged five successor states because there's a number of periphery states that are also from prior to the succession wars and the fall of the star league but they don't they, don't, they have books of their own but they're not on the scale of these inner houses also Leal is the smallest of the five it's considered militarily the weakest uh and and the one most loathed or hated it's the bad guy the obvious bad guy for most most players and i i think I am pulling that category because I'm biased to some degree, but also uh, also acknowledge that they're also, they're clever, intelligent, and 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 uh, very crafty individuals that that rule and run things in the house. Now, one of the things that the game system in the early days began to establish, and later the novels have tried to correct a little bit. Uh, in both good and bad ways is the the racial makeups of the given houses and it's implied that house leal the the majority of the, the planets were that it, that can they're contained within the compelling confederation were settled by in large part peoples from southeast asia uh china uh vietnam the koreas you know the philippines on you know, Laos, all this stuff. So you have this collage of Asian philosophy and mindset. And then there was a large portion uh, of one of the political subdivisions of, of the Compelling Confederation uh, that were settled by Russians, uh, in most part, West Russians. So do you, do you have this, this political uh, jumble, this cultural ethic mixture of uh, Central Asia and Western Russia. Now, as time progressed, they became more blended as more Asian in mindset. And of all the houses, the most, I don't know if they're the most strict, uh, but they're definitely the most convoluted when it comes to controlling things and keeping things under uh, wraps. Uh, House Corita is more it's just in its own way a completely different entity uh, with a different set of morals and different set of uh, expectations of its people. Uh, the house, the people in House Korea are probably less free than the ones in the Compella Confederation uh, of the House Leal. And the reality is that the top layers of House Leal and, and the Compella Confederation are very mindful of indoctrination and, and controlling media and controlling uh, how culture is perceived and operated it's, and geared towards serving the, the house, serving the mass and not the individual. But that said, many planets within the Compelling Confederation, many people as citizens are actually pretty, pretty, they're not 
hamstrung. They're not tied down. They have a lot of personal freedoms in part because of how the government system works. And that is a whole other video by itself. Ironically, I keep saying that in every one of these. Uh, the political system, it works in all the houses, is similar to this neo uh, uh, medieval fiefdom thing. The, the, the sheer t amount of planets, there's some excess of some close to 400 planets, 400 planets and almost as many systems and that, that are uh, acknowledged and probably twice as many of those that are uh, colonies and mining operations and commercial ventures and, and bases and things like this that are not a quote a colonized planet, uh, the sheer numbers of these, and then the, the fact that taking time to communicate between the systems, so from the core world, the leader uh, of Cyan to the outer fringes of, of the Compello Confederation, communications can take days, weeks, months to get to where they need to go. So trying to have a centralized government control everything directly is impossible. So that's where we have the nobility system that was established back in the day and still carries through today. And, and they go into some depth in all the books to explain how that works for each individual house. So we look at the Impella Confederation and uh, we have a page from the Red Dragon out of my old monster manual. Uh, all right. You never know what I'm going to find in one of these things. When I pop up, and I meant to take that out and put it where it belongs, but inter uh, introduction, you know, prepared by Adel Corbin, project leader for House of Leal Documentation and Development Program, Comstar Archives Tele Terra. The following is a summary of material obtained by my department's investigations in the Compella Confederation over the last three years. Throughout this document, care has been taken to present variable verifiable information. Whenever a conclusion reached by our investigators cannot be established by hard data, I take personal responsibility or, uh, for the position presented. These explanations, elaborations, and personal comments are set off in parentheses in the text and label editor. So we got the current situation as of the year 2025, when this is when all this stuff supposedly takes place. And what we get is the history, the economics, the political objectives. We get a history of the house and of uh, the inner sphere in general. Out of Chaos and Terra, the first Leal, Elias, the Green Despair, New Beginnings, Changing Times, War of Independence, an audience for the governor, a bunch of interesting things in here. The, the, uh, so we got seven, six, seven hundred years, eight hundred years of history. That leads up from after the after the 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 age before the age of war when everybody's left Terra to go out and settle these planets and expand and then the age of war and this attempt to for Earth Terra to take control and regain control of all these powerful colonies and their independent their choice chooses choices not to do that and to resist and then what leads up to the, the birth of the Star League and then the some three hundred years of the Star League itself and then the fall of the Star League and uh, the four succession wars, the three succession wars, because the fourth has not yet taken place. It's on the verge of happening at this point in the game system. So, Seeds of Destruction, Blood and Gold. Uh, so, we get in Point of Order, the Compelling Confederation. And we got the Taikano connection. Question is, someone would want to be the ruler of a given world, let alone say 20 or 30 worlds, does not always allow for a sensible answer. I mean, just think of the constant pearls involved. Crimes against the state, fanatical extremists, the unruly populace, betrayal at court, revolts in the army, invasions by foreign governments, tax riots, pirates, and rebellions. God, I love it so. Anton the Karanis, the first tetrarch of the Tychonov Grand Union, quoted in Ancedents by Luigi Pazal, Windows Press, 2295. Genghis can and so can we. Takanov Graffiti, circa 2170. So, friends and other enemies, every man for himself, feeling the pinch, the heiress crisis. I'd make a pack of the devil herself if only I could straighten out this mess to my advantage. Of course, the devil would have to promise me 30 seats in the Senate, two battalions of jump troops, before I'd let her make an appointment. Ranko Liao quoted to the greats, quoted in the greats by Patrick Ping, Hazard House, 21, 2401. Yeah. All right, so we're looking at bits and pieces of uh, 
artwork, Liao against Merrick, challenges from Shang, Franco Liao, the appreciation, making the best of a good situation, the Aries conventions. See, that's another thing um, that I always felt early and on, and, and I don't know, it's still diversified more as the decades went by, but early days, they made to try to make this effort where race wasn't a thing as much as culture and, and devotion to a particular creed. So uh, each house has its own version of culture and creed. And so it wasn't you know, like in-house Corita in, in uh, the Wolves on the Border, for example. If you look at the cover, you see a African-American man who is a samurai. And this fellow is, in every intense purpose, is Corita Japanese. They, his bloodline be damned. And of course, some of that stuff become more and more uh, flavored towards a particular setting. And, and I thought that was sad in that aspect, but that's just a personal opinion. So to find a mixture of uh, different blood types and, and people types in the future is kind of absurd. It's more about culture and, and philosophy and how you, you know, how you grew up, grown up and raised. So uh, here's a another insert. Relatorship and specs. So I never forget the first time I saw her leadership. It was a fortnight after the inauguration. She come down to inspect the regiment. We all been expecting some old stuffed bird full of gold and lace and frills, printing away, looking down at us with her large spectacles at the end of her nose. What we got was a pale young figure astride a chestnut mare. She was dressed in the red green uniform of the Hussars, a little small little barrette on top of her brown hair. In her hand was a small scepter and her hip, hip a long sword trailing back over the saddle cloth. As the officer traded salutes with each other, she pulled her nag up close to so get a better look at her. As I was in the front rank, I had a fine view to be sure. I found myself looking into the deepest blue eyes I'd ever seen. A slight smile passed her lips before she could hide it. Before moving on, she quietly tipped her cap to us all and dismounted, stopping to stop to gently place a kiss on the regimental colors. That night, there wasn't a man alive in the regiment that would not lay his life down for this little one. Me, I dare say, I'd been the first one in line. From Ten Years a Soldier by Timothy Shanter, Red Sash Printer, 2412. Well, let's see. Some mechs and rumors of mechs. Sir Stephen's Army, The Good, The Bad, and The Beautiful. The Fair Melissa, Knocking the Night, Massacre of Innocence. The Magistry, Mother and Daughter. Peace with world, the, the Free Worlds League, the Taunt with the Bond, Winning Hearts and Minds, on and on. Rebooters War, lots and lots of story, lots of history. Pelham Reforms, Contingency Planning, and Incident of the Mater, Red Storm Rising, Stephen the Usurpers. Now we, we're getting into the, the, the ending days of the, of the Star League and still some three, four hundred years in the past. You know, it's 2780 roughly. Blow and counter blow, the first succession war. So, said here, from the standpoint of the Confederation, the outbreak of the first succession war proved in some ways more of a blessing than curse. First years of succession war, Barbara Leal augmented her forces by timely purchasing a two league regular regiments, the 4th Talcetti Rangers and the 15th Dracon. These she could be dispatched as watchdogs to deal with any problems along the American border. At the same time, Hillco Industries began their shipments of the first versions of their famous Long Tom artillery pieces, which were eagerly incorporated into specialized units within the Capellan military. The strife shreds of the Aries Conventions tossed to the dustbin of history. Capellans could now concentrate on achieving their military objectives with a little concern about the fate for civilians. Tactical atomic weapons and chemical agents, both which the Capellans had secretly amassed in abundance for years, were now unwrapped. With these lethal New Year's Eve presents to her uh, colonels, Barbara Liao Lea renewed the lore along the Bond border, winning significant victories against the Chisholm Raiders and the Deneb Black Cavalry. Starting in 2785, the Capellans began a systematic occupation of star systems hitherto held by original Terran hege hege hegemony and hegemony. Between 2785 and 2800, Confederation forces spearheaded by the Aryan Grenaders and Justin's Crusade, Justina's Crusader, Crusaders, Crusaders, acquired Carver 5, Key, Terra Firma, Brandt, Epsilon Indy, Epsilon Irati, Fletcher, and Heiss against little or no opposition. 
Barbara Leal's appetite for Terran delicacies did not go unnoticed by House Korea, although engaged in more important matters. Korea clashed repeatedly with the compelling between 2800 and 2805, or rich worlds of Rio and R Ronald, unable to deal with the heavier Korea crusaders and warhammers of the Darien regulars. The compelling field commanders adopted new and innovative tactics to even the odds whenever possible. Things got uglier and dirtier. Sando Quinn's recruits, a pro opera hand, the second section war, limits of success, near collapse, finally a turnaround, Maximilian, the recent history, warriors versus regulars. There's always been this genius or madness mindset uh, or uh, blood gene in the, the Liao house family itself. Uh, many of their leadership and, and their top people are bloody geniuses when it comes to politics, intrigue, and uh, maneuvers and things like this. And some of them slip over the over the edge into pure madness and insanity. And this is a trait that they watch with with bated breath for the, each generation the Liao takes over. It's just a running theme there in that house. Dealing with Merrick, Maximilian's Diplomacy, the Devon Question, Cloning Hats. This was the book for uh, swords and uh, the sword and the dagger. So, Cloning Hats, the kidnapping seven select scientists returned high dividends for Maximilian Lino. Beginning in 3016, these Devon specialists were placed under direct mascara and mascarab control. Their task being to create a human double of Hans Devon, which at a point in time could be substitute for the real leader. Despite numerous setbacks and loss of life, these plans continue to mature for the next decade. See, this just goes to show you that the Leals are patient people. They plot and plan, and if it takes decades for, for a plot to ripen and mature, so be it. Uh, don't get that wrong. They're capable, quick and act, decisive, and if not insane uh, reactions on a moment's notice as well. But they're very crafty people. This is why a lot of people in the interfere believe never turn your back on a, never turn back on a, on a compellent. The compellent will stab you in the back as soon the first opportunity they get because they can't. It's the old it's the old turtle and the scorpion, all right? Why did you stab me? Now we're both going to dry. I I you know I stung you because that is what I do. That is what I am, and you were a fool to let me on your back. Operation Doppelganger is put in motion. Marion nearly succeeded, only through the timely arrival of New Avalon, one of the House to Bond's most trusted comrades in arms was the plot foiled. So the fact that Don, the Hans de Bond almost lost his life, and, and House de Bond almost lost their ruler er, to see it substitute by a, a puppet of a foreign leadership, it's ironic because many decades later, House Devon, Hans Devon, and, and, and elements within his command do the exact same thing to House Merrick and replace Thomas Merrick uh, with a, not a clone, but, a, but a, a substitute for the original and with mixed results. They were desperate at the time. Desperation calls for desperate measures. But sometimes there's a certain line, and you think Hans, Hans knew better. He knew better, and yet he still took that risk. That's some decades and uh, you know in, ahead of this stuff. So McCarran's War, the Concord at Carrapton, a sinister response. So we get into the social political structure. So. Like I said, I, I, I don't want to bog down into two hours of material because I, there, there's so much to cover in these these books. It's just it's hard to cover everything in a reasonable amount of time. Compelling government is like an ancient Terran truck, a, a sleigh pulled by three horses. And with each of the horses attempting to lead the others, three horses would be the protectorate, the perfectorate, the office of the chancellor held by centuries from members of House Leal and the House of Scions. Each has competed for absolute control of the state. Although the chancellor appears to dominate, it's not quite true. There have been weak chancellors and there have been strong members of the perfectorate and strong nobles within the Scions who have exercised a great deal of power. Although at present the chancellor leads the compelling state with the dictatorial power, he must have cooperation of the per perfectorate and the House of Scions. An appreciation of this critical understanding uh, of Compel the state in its dealings with all its other successor states. It says here, so the perfectorate, the chancellor may rule, but we govern. So think of the, the government, the, the chan this would be their version of Congress. The chancellor, I am the state, Louis 
14th King of France, circa 1700. I own the state, Maximilian Lille, Chancellor of the Compelled Confederation, circa 3020. It says the Chancellor of the Compelled Confederation is chosen from among the six members of the perfecter upon death upon the current Chancellor. Originally envisioned in Franco Leal's Leal's statement of Pran and Compelling Unity, the office is now position held for life. All right. And then we have the House of Scions. Scions. Chancellors come and go, often dying, sometimes murdering the perfectorate, and less than perfect body legislates, and nobody cares. The Scions remain. The ability, like all their other forms of raw energy, cannot be destroyed. Catherine D. Winter, Duchess of Cyrus, opening remarks to the first session of the House of Scions in 2612, reported in the official House Gazette at 2613. Not so much a legislative body as a forum for personal expression. The House of Scions is a body of 200 assembled nobles, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the cat, the compelling minstrel. We are the forgotten doing the impossible for the ungrateful, an unofficial motto of, of the compelling ministry, uh, basically the government, the bureaucracy. Beyond the Trioka, the day to day operation of the compelling confederation, according by various administration departments known collectively as the compelling ministerial. The ministerial is originally originating the concessions made by the Chancellor Baxter to avoid widespread civil disorder, etc. Military resources, minist uh, ministry of resources, minist ministry of information, standards, ministry of trade and exchange, ministry of development, ministry of social education. This ministry dates back to the days of Solicitor Liao, ostensibly created to oversee and coordinate education for both children and young adults. This ministry has been charged since the days of Tormix Liao with the political indoctrination of Confederation of youth. The ministry emphasizes a very pro Liaoist uh, interpretation of compelling history and dealt with civil virtues that molded on, around the principles of self sacrifice and subordination of eventual individual desires for the needs of the state. Although officially acknowledged as fitting and proper, such indoctrination has been criticized privately by many of the intellectual and members of this ministry are looked down upon or looked upon with social disdain. Ministry of the military. See, that gives you the insight into the, the general population, the, the average uh, compellent who is raised from birth to believe that it's his duty to do whatever he can to make sure the state succeeds and as a whole, the group <gasps> succeeds as a whole. So that doesn't always pan out that way, but there's a lot of, I, you can use the term fanatics loosely, but there's a lot of very dedicated, very perhaps misguided by other house philosophies, people willing to go to great extremes to do, to achieve the goals set by the house. So when a kind of a war breaks out, there are a lot of so-called patriots that step up and defend the homeland and are, are vicious about doing so. And there are others who join the special services and, and the, 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 their, the government's version of the CIA and, and willing to go to great lengths to achieve those goals. So we get internal organization, the commodities or... Oh, as of 3025, the Helen Confederation compromises over 400 populated worlds to govern so many of the Chalcers, blah, blah, and I've already explained it. Duchies, warrants, and demises, uh, uh, diams and reflectors, the legal system, religion and philosophy, a liberal intolerance. We do not say, let us refrain from rending unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. We say, let us render first unto ourselves the just rewards of our own labors and unto our creator the things that are his, and let Caesar take afterward what he will. Jacob Zoroaster, Elder Bishop, the Church of the Future Present, in 3013. So the chancellors of the compelling state have done little to interfere with religious philosophy beliefs of the various populations of the confederation. They avoided establishing an official state religion and have intervened in religious matters only on disputes with rival sects or threatening internal harmony. Yeah, that's right. So the Corbin the state philosophies, the Corbin doctrine, the Sarna mandate, the Lorax order. This is an interesting one because basically this is the warrior house is established by the Lorax order and this philosophy. So how one of the neo-military organizations that the House of Liao has to be has to be able to tap is these eight warrior houses who established some very potent, very uh, powerful military units 
uh, follow a certain code. Uh, not unlike Bushido, that the house Karinas like to lamb, uh, wave around like a wet flag. Uh, the Kampalas have these deeper, more personal uh, codexes, and they're very, very effective to the people who buy into the song and dance. Thought control, philosophical examiners, courts of philosophical inquiry that rakes to the dedicated. We get into the compelling military and all the breakdown. You know, the various units. So there's lots of different units and how mercenaries are considered and treated, home guard regiments, medical corps, ranks, the military. Warehouse regiments, the death commandos, pretty, some of the toughest SOBs in, in the inner sphere. Uh, the mascara, mascarova, I can never pronounce it right. But the Secret Service provides invaluable assistance to the gathering and interpretation of intelligence for the compelling armed forces based on an earlier intelligence gathering agency. The Secret Service, an ancient Terran, the, the Mascarac, uh, an ancient Terran name loosely translated as the purposeful dissemination of misinformation. Also provides the state with internal security. Its mission includes, one, providing maximum intelligence on enemy military and political dispositions. Two, denying information to the enemy operatives within the Confederation. Three, detecting enemies of the Confederation, external and internal. And four, carrying out special operations overt and covert as required. So, there's some pretty nasty hombres. The only group more feared in the inner sphere would be the, I, the Korea's ISF. But that's not to say that the other houses, versions of the Secret Service aren't as potent and as deadly as any of these guys. So, you know, aerospace, mech warriors, support personnel, battle mech regiment. So, we have a bunch of individual commands for regions. And some that are real straight on the Liao, House Liao. We also have the the, uh, the Highlanders, which Northwood Highlanders was uh, a very potent mili uh, mercenary command and has a whole other history later on in, in the Fourth Secession War. Uh, uh, the, the Big Mac, McCarran's Armored, which is another massive. Uh, if, if there were any military mercenary commands that could almost rival Wolf's Dragoons, it's these, the Northland Highlanders, uh, McCarran's Armored Cavalry, all are huge, massive, with lots of resources and lots of material. Uh, they just lack what the clan connection that gave Wolf Dragon such an edge over everybody else in the inner sphere. So, all the different service units and things like that. So, we're not going to try to go through all those. You know, those, like I said, literally, I could do a video on almost every one of these units and all these houses and there are hundreds and hundreds of them all right so here's like i said the crim is like cowards and here's our scouts mercenaries mccarran's armored cavalry five hardcore regiments all right Aren't you? here's our our scammers legionnaires a picture of vanity more of the particular legionnaires. Uh, commander, mercenary commander is a former Mrs. Ningpo. So, you don't have certain beauty standards, you're not going to get them hired by them. By them. Military decorations, martial training commands, House uh, Leo Battle Mix, Experimental Battle Text, the Raven. Raven is a very, very nice scout mech, very inventive. For its era, considering it was, you know, uh, beginning at the time of the Fourth Succession, where we're starting to see this uptick in in uh, technology development and new new things are actually being created and learned. New processes, old, many old processes are being rediscovered. Uh, the cataract. Is House Liao's latest attempt to build a successful heavy battle mech. That's another thing. House Liao is light on battle on heavy battle mechs, assault mechs. They have a lot. A lot of the houses 
have deficiencies. Uh, how Steiner, for example, has lots of heavy mechs and assault mechs, but are but have not so many medium and lights uh, because their production capacity is just was just geared that way, and that's what survived through the succession wars. Where other houses have a mixture of issues as well. So in the case of the House of Liao, uh, House Creed has the same problem. They they don't have as mat as much heavy mech and assault mech uh, manufacturing capacity as the signers do. Uh, the Federated uh, Sons has a good mixture of all the categories, but they don't have a sheer huge production base. And it takes, it just it takes its toll. Everybody has some differences and, and issues. So the cultures and arts. So the average compelling citizen is held to be a servant of the greater humanity, a confederation of modern police state in which various government hierarchies compete for loyalty of the planetary populations while discouraging free speech, anti-government expression. Basic individual rights are sub, uh, sub, subjugated to the needs of the state, neither military, economic, or political. Any attempt for the question to criticize the chancellor or his representatives can be severely punished. For all this, the individual citizen avoids a fair degree of personal comfort and a chance to improve his station life. In addition, compellents can draw on a rich cultural heritage stretching back from the days of the compellent re uh, republic and the beginning of the first compellent archives. Recent chancellors have shown interest in reviving the cultural pride of the compelling union. In accordance to what state dogmas, art, like any other endeavor, must serve the needs of the state, and what passes for artistic expression in the compelling state is generally tinged with political messages of support for House Liao. So compelling um, uh, citizenship for native-born compellents, non-born compellents, citizens' obligations, uh, every compelling citizen has a certain obligation to his fellows in the state. He must take an oath of allegiance to the Confederation, to House Liao, and to the Chancellor. The dictates are not to be questioned. Individuals not belonging to army or support services must serve in their home guard in case of invasion. Skilled workers can be relocated to other worlds as part of colonization or industrial expansion or to repopulate a planet suffering enemy depredations. Greater good the Confederation demands that a local planetary DM can require an individual be retrained to address shortages in the workforce. Ministry development fixes wages and prices according to recommendations of the planetary officials. The average compellent has no say in its working conditions or wages. There's no such thing as a union in the compellent confederation. It just gives you a really kind of a window into what they're dealing with. So in theory, each compellent citizen has the privilege of petitioning the chancellor personally to redress a grievance against a government agency. This is seldom done. An individual may still seek out local refractor to act as a spokesperson to the House of Skyons. Loss of citizenship, dictatorship, the supporters, the entitled, the artists, the quality, the servitors, education system, rewards of compelling life. Individuals may buy and own personal property, including landed estates. Uh, there are all non-noble citizens of the Confederation guaranteed state pensions and free medical care upon retirement. Pericopilies is one of the oldest and most politically controversial issues in the, system, the compelling system. This is the privilege most loudly touted by a compelling statement outside the Confederation. What is not so said so loudly is the local director may order an individual's retirement postponed for a limited time if the retiree is viewed to having shirked state responsibilities in a way, or I imagine if there's they have a skill set that's in desperate, desperately needed. So you might find yourself working much longer than you expected. Free education, family life, free medical care, and all that entails. See, now this is this is always a cartoon I got a kick out of because it gives you kind of an insight a little bit into the idea of the Confederation. So you got a hundred guys pulling a nail. So caption one, a hundred compellents pulling a wooden cart laden with a huge copper nail 50 feet long. Caption two, a noble passerby stops and inquires to what such a huge nail is for. Caption three, the foreman replies, I don't know, sir, but it fills our quota of 10 tons of nails for the week. Cartoon displayed in the Worlds of Promise poultry and printers, February 13, 2017. Right. As long as you fill the obligations. They all doctor in the distribution of wealth, funding the Confederation, import duties, corporate considerations, corporate relations, some of the major corporations in the, com in the com com uh, country or in the Confederation. And then we got key personalities that were pertinent to the era. Uh, Candace Liao, Romano Liao, Patrick Gravali, the President Sherry's Medals, Chandra, Chandra Ling, 
director of the Capellan Mascara, Jordan Liao, Carmelia Liao, Victor Hargraves, Duke of Chesterton, Pablo Reddick, head of the military, so on and so forth. Right. And we got to write down some of the various worlds. Here's a world name, a grand base, position forward in system, seven days to the jump point. Planetary DM is Lord Stabaka Reptelja. Comstar facility B average is 3.4 billion people living on the planet. Personal holding a Duke of Thomas, Colonel uh, Powell Reddick. Grand Base is a major military staging, training, and repair facility. After Taikonov, Grand Base maintains the largest mech production facilities in the Confederation. The permanent garrison force consists of two Scion Comedy Reserve units and one Warrior House regiment. Grand Base is also the home of the newly created Warrior House Death Commandos, possibly uh, Maximilian Leal's hedge against his colonel becoming too powerful. Grand Base also supports the local militia backed by major aerospace fighter and naval support. Right. And others talking about commodity and some of their plans. Compelling commodity, commonality, or how to pronounce it. Alright, so we just get on. We're about down to the end of it anyway. So here's a family tree of the House of the Owl. So that is House of the Owl. The smallest, but not the most impotent house in the inner sphere. Till next time, this is Rick, and I hope you guys have a great weekend.